Alexander picks up his royal insignia ring from the beach. Alexander pushes the plank to one side. A box has been partially buried under sand. There's nothing of it. Alexander takes the coin and leaves the ruined box where it is. The currents continue to murmur, but they do. There's no reason to there's no reason to use that. Excuse me, guardsmen, uh, uh, guard dogs. I've been traveling for months to see Princess Kasima. I would like an audience, please. I'm sorry, but the princess is not receiving visitors, particularly not strangers. Alexander decides to show his royal insignia ring to the Castle of the Crown Guards. With all of his papers lost in the shipwreck, it is the only possible calling card he can think of. Good day. I'm Prince Alexander of Daventry. I'm an acquaintance of Princess Cassima. If you could just inform her that I'm here, please. <laughs> so everyone says. Let me just look at that ring. What does it say, Gruff? Kingdom of Daventry, Prince Alexander. Ah, wait here while I go see what Captain Saladin thinks of this. The guard returns a moment later with a majestic looking creature. Captain Saladin speaks with a voice that is gentle, but reflects a will of iron. Prince Alexander of Daventry, I presume. I'm afraid I'm unfamiliar with your country, but I'm sure Wazir al Hazred will want to meet you, if indeed you are a friend of the princess. Please, follow me. Lord al a visitor to see you. Prince Alexander of Daventry. What is it that you seek, Prince Alexander? Pardon the intrusion, my lord, but I came to see Princess Cassima. Some months ago, my father, King Graham, saved my family and I from imprisonment under an evil wizard named Mordak. The same wizard that kidnapped the princess? Exactly. When my father rescued us, he also liberated Cassima and sent her home. Then your father has my gratitude, and that of the entire kingdom. But I'm afraid I still fail to see the purpose of your visit. <clears throat> well, I came to make sure that Cassima arrived safely and to pay my respects. Before we parted, she gave me an invitation to visit. I have no doubt she did exactly that at the time, Prince Alexander. However, things have greatly changed for Cosima since her ordeal in Mordak's castle. Cosima's parents both became ill and died while she was gone. Cosima is sequestered in mourning for them as befits a princess. She is not receiving visitors of any kind. 
Even if she were, I do not think your visit would be appropriate. You see, it is time for Cassima to take her responsibilities seriously. With her parents gone, she no longer has the luxury to be a carefree maiden. As was her parents' wish, Cassima and I are to be wed. We shall rule the kingdom together. I assure you, our marriage is all Cassima wants now. As a prince and a gentleman, it would be best that you leave before there is any further embarrassment. I see. I suppose that I was mistaken. I thought for certain that Cassima... Well, I apologize. A young man sees what he wishes to see. I'm sorry you've wasted your time traveling to the land of the Green Isles. May your journey home be swift. Perhaps I will take the opportunity to look around your fair land while I'm here. I would advise against that. The kingdom is rather, shall we say, inhospitable these days. But it is your neck. You may risk it if you please. Captain Saladin will escort you from the castle. Good day. You have had your hearing with Wizir Al-Hazred. I trust you'll respect his wishes and not return. I have been instructed not to let you into the castle again. Good day, my lord. Captain Saladin whispers something to the guard dogs at the castle gate, and they nod with understanding. Alexander has a feeling they won't be letting him into the castle again. Good day! Alexander takes a mint. Good day, merchant. What can you tell me about the land of the Green Isles? I can tell you she is in a dark time. Without the ferry, communication between the islands has ground to a halt, and so nearly has my business. Why the long ages of peace have ended, and why the crown has not done something about it is beyond me. But then, I am a shopkeeper, not a politician, and can only hope for better days. I have this copper coin. Is it of any value to you at all? Hmm, most interesting. I have never seen a Daventry coin before, but it is copper genuine enough. I might even find a buyer who is interested in foreign currency. The items on the front counter are the only things in the store that I can let go for the price of one copper. You may make your choice from there. Alexander looks at the items on the counter to make his selection. That mechanical nightingale looks intriguing. I believe I'll take it. Very well. Your coin is well spent. Remember, this is a pawn shop. I am always willing to take back my own goods in trade. I'll remember. Thank you. Alexander can enter the building. Hello. I will be right up. Now, what can I do for you? Good day, sir. I'm a stranger in this land. What can you tell me about the land of the Green Isles? That is quite a question, young man. Who are you, and what would you have me tell you? My name is Alexander. I know I'm on the Isle of the Crown, but I'd like to know whatever you can tell me about this island 
and if there are other islands nearby. You are indeed a stranger. Anxious is the man who knows not the customs of the land beneath his feet. This island is called the Isle of the Crown, because the royal family's castle is here. Besides the castle, we also have this village, and the docks over to the west. There are at least three other islands. The Isle of the Sacred Mountain, the Isle of the Beast, and the Isle of Wonder. At least three? Does no one know for certain? <laughs> this is no ordinary land, Alexander. The land of the Green Isles has always been a place of vague boundaries, as if islands come and go. Legend speaks of a fourth island, an isle shrouded in mists. I myself have never seen it. Then, too, the land of the Green Isles is said to exist on the boundaries of this world and the next. Even darker places are reputed to be closer here than anywhere else in the world. That's quite a claim. <laughs> claim, yes, but probably just local superstition. We who live here on the Isle of the Crown, at least, sleep well enough at night. Those first three islands you mentioned, how might I learn more about them? Ideally, a young man seeking such knowledge would travel to their shores and learn about them firsthand. Meeting the leaders of each place would be helpful, naturally. Unfortunately, the ferry no longer runs between the islands. There has been much political unrest, and it has been too dangerous to travel for years. Perhaps the ferryman can tell you more. He has little enough to do these days. And if you haven't been there already, you might seek an audience at the castle. Thank you kindly, merchant for all your good advice. Ah, but advice is free, Alexander. Making use of it costs much more. How much for that book on the counter, Merchant? It is a fine book, is it not? I obtained it from the estate of the one and only magician this kingdom has ever had poofed himself into an aardvark in the end, or oh, so I heard. I never found the spells all that useful myself, but then I lead a boring life. I tell you what, if you can find another rare book, something a bit more marketable, I might be willing to exchange the spell book for it. Thinking of Cosima. Alexander decides to leaf through one of the volumes of love poetry. He reads, Thy hair, thy lips, thy beauteous face, and all thy studied female grace have won for thee anon a place within this broken breast. Not bad. And another. Upon the shore the lilies bend, untouched by worldly care, where shadow they her earthly bed Oh, that she were not there. Yikes! And another. What was it when I looked at you? What power has chained me through and through and binds my heart with links so tight I cannot live without the sight of you? What nameless thing has captured me and made me powerless to flee? What thing is it without a name that brings my mind e'er back the same to thee? The name of love cannot apply. Its commonness does not decry the haunted, hunted, painful cry that my heart makes for you, that e'er my soul eternal.